Hey YouTube, Ben Ochart here, and uh, it's 100 degrees in Southern California at the end of October. Uh, what's up with that? <laughs> I put all the heaters back in my tanks thinking things were going to cool down, and uh, hey, I got somebody who wants to say hello. This is Lucy, and that's Pepper. Sometimes you hear them in my videos, <laughs> right? Yeah, okay, sweetie. Anyway, someone asked me about water changes and I referred them to a video I did a while back uh, called Water Change Day. But I figured it might be a good time for an update. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at how I've been doing water changes recently. I keep it very simple, very easy, very fast, okay? Let's take a look. My first step is called housekeeping. And uh, this is where I just get anything that needs to be done first. And this would include taking any algae off of the glass. It would also include cleaning up any plants, whether they're plastic or real. Taking um, any algae growth off of them, cleaning them up. Anything that uh, is needed, you can see here sometimes the plants in the 100 can get a little bit of black algae especially when I leave the drapes open to get some sunshine and my lazy pleco back there doesn't clean them. Uh, it also would include um, servicing the algae scrubber, opening that thing up and harvesting some of that algae. I talk about that in other videos. Number two is unplug. Anything that is going to be impacted by lowering the water level, such as power heads that are near the surface, as well as heaters that could be... Uh, adversely affected by a water level that's too low and could actually cause some damage with the heater. So I unplug the electronics and uh, just as a tip, I use um, in my 60, I put the heater low and horizontal. I trick a trick I learned when I used to keep discus so they wouldn't try and lay eggs on the heaters. And uh, that way I don't have to worry about it when I'm doing water changes because it's uh, too low to have the water level affected. I then uh, lay out anything that I'm going to need to protect the floor, whether it be buckets to put rocks in, uh, towels, anything that's going to uh, prepare the area uh, for carrying out the water change. This would include gathering up your uh, hoses, your siphons, you know, things like that. I, of course, uh, am no longer on the what I used to call the bucket brigade. It was damaging my back and making me reluctant to do water changes. And so I picked up an Aquion, and I have an Aquion and a Python. And these are uh, put attached to the faucet. And, uh, and after doing that, I start the vacuuming. You can start the vacuuming by turning the faucet on and letting the water run out. Um, not going to the tank, but by adjusting the valve you can actually create a siphon from your tank to the sink. Here's a clip from the old water change day video. And you can see I've got that 50 foot, uh, 50 foot aqua on there and, uh, and the area ready to get in and vacuum. The um, siphon simply goes into the tank after you've attached the other end to the, to the sink and you just simply start the water running and you get a siphon. And um, in this case, which I do every now and then with my aquariums, I had removed all the decor and I have discovered that a lot of detritus can be under the decor. Very often I'll take one end of the siphon instead of connecting it to the sink I'll simply take it outside because with 50 feet you can get that that hose quite a distance, and I'll just uh, you know I'll just start a a normal siphon just by sucking on the end and creating a water flow, and then using that water to uh, to help some of these plants, and this way you're not wasting this uh, nutrient rich plant water, and. Uh, so I'll water as much as I can outside, but then I do need to get inside so I can use that, um, that siphon tube to suck up some of the detritus that is, um, 
that has settled on the um, on the coral substrate. Now I will admit that um, a substrate that is sand is a bit better in that it doesn't allow detritus to get down deep. The sand that I have in the black uh, the black background acrylic 100 is better for detritus because it just sits on top and is very easy to clean. This type of a substrate, you really do need to dig in there and move things around. And you can see when you do so, you start to, uh, you start to pull up some of the detritus, whether it's the uh, fish waste, old rotting food, and things like that that just simply sit there and rot and uh, turn into ammonia. And in the case of poop and things like this, they're great uh, for hosting bacteria which, of course, can lead to diseases like colmenaris and other nasty things. So you want to get that stuff scooped up. And even though you may have pushed your decor deep into your uh, substrate, I guarantee you that if you move it, you're going to find that there is some waste underneath it. And also you can sometimes find other, uh, other things. I've heard people discovering dead fish, things of this nature. So uh, definitely from time to time, go ahead and pull everything out of your tank and, uh, and give it a real good thorough vacuum. I say if you did that maybe once a month, you'd be uh, in pretty good shape. And this, of course, is vacuuming the uh, vacuuming of the 60-gallon uh, back in the day when this was really the, the only tank I had. After you complete the vacuuming, you're ready to put water back into the tank. In the case of using a hose, you would go ahead and treat for the entire volume of the tank. If I was treating my 150, I would use safe because it goes a long way with the bigger tanks. And when you add water from tap directly to the tank, you treat for the entire volume. I also use uh, cichlid lake salt just to add some of the trace minerals that might not be being added from the tap. And I use Prime when I'm doing uh, water changes on the smaller tanks, like the 60-gallon and the 29-gallon um, quarantine. In this case, uh, Prime was added to the 60-gallon, and then temperature-matched water was then added to the tank. Next step, of course, once you've re got the water level back to where you want it, is to plug in. Be sure you plug back in your heaters, especially if it's winter, and plug in your power heads and any other equipment that you might have uh, unplugged in order to uh, lower the water level. And then, of course, your final step is to put everything away, store everything, wipe down your tank tops, your tank glass on the outside, Wipe down your stand and uh, put all your tools neatly away. And then the final step, which is, of course, the most important step, is to uh, enjoy a nice, clean tank full of healthy fish. And I'll, um, I'll wrap up this video with a, a comment very similar to one I made at the end of a video that I recorded called 10 Tips. And uh, my final comment in that video was to, uh, to not obsess, not worry, not constantly be looking at that little speck that has appeared on that fish's tail and checking your uh, parts per million of, uh, and your water hardness and your nitrates and your ammonia and your, you know, don't obsess, just really enjoy the heck out of these beautiful, beautiful creatures. So there you have it. Very simple. I keep it simple by design. I have four tanks. Some of you folks out there have 20, 30 tanks. I can't imagine unless you're automated the kind of work that takes. But for these, it can take a, an entire morning and get them all done. And uh, But it keeps the fish nice and healthy. And... Uh, there are a lot more reasons to change water than just reducing nitrates. You're bringing back minerals and imagine opening up a room that you've been in for a long time with a lot of people 
and that room's been all shut up. Windows and doors have been sealed, and now all of a sudden the doors and windows are opened and you have fresh air. I imagine that's how it feels to these fish after you do a water change. So do those water changes, my friend. All right, say bye. <laughs> bye, y'all.